Hey guys, what's up? It's Tim Michael from TimMichaelArts.com working on another tutorial for you. Now please do not mind the fan in the background. This room is hot and I want to live. So uh, basically what I'm going to do in this tutorial is not so much a tutorial as much as it is just a walk through what I'm going to do with uh, this gentleman's face here to make it look like this gentleman's face here with the shading. Um, so this is just a walk through like I have done so many times before. But I've learned that the best way to learn to paint someone, uh, to learn to be an artist who paints people, is just to watch other artists do it. So we may as well go ahead and do that while I am working on a client piece. I've already put down the base tone, and I've already set my um, masks. If you don't know about masks, you can find that in uh, my other videos. Uh, there is a video dedicated to masks. So make sure you check that out. And uh, basically, I'm just selected my shadow tone. I'm gonna go ahead up here to my brushes and select my 300 megapixel, <laughs> 300 pixel. I hate when I say megapixel. My 300 pixel um, airbrush. Make sure that this layer is selected and not its mask. I uh, definitely want just the layer selected. And now I can go in here, and you'll see I'm gonna size that brush down just a little bit. And I'm just gonna start shading the. Um, the shadow tones here and I'm looking at a picture that I got over here of this guy and this looks a lot like him I'm very pleased with his face so um, this is just the first shadow there will be several shadows this one's kinda of just general shadow so it it is going to be in places where the Sun will be a little bit um, like I, I will do it on certain parts of the face where you'd go, no, wait a minute, the sun's right there. Why, why would you do that? Why would you do that there? Well, that's because this is just the first stage of shadow. It's going to give definition to the face. It's going to show the face where it's supposed to warp around itself and, you know, make it look round. And so you definitely want to capture those things. And then what we'll do is we'll go in with the darker shadow in a few minutes here and start getting in the um, uh, the actual shading where the sun just would not hit and it's bright and. Uh, well, dark. <laughs> Man, I am confused today. You know, just where the dark areas would be. So, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to remove some of those lines that I just drew there. There we go. And I want to do that again, but I want to do it a little bit smoother. So, more like that. There we go. I like doing all the shadows on the uh, right hand side pointing downward. So, that means that the sun would be up here going this way. And, uh,. I'm just getting in here, digging in, shading it up, shade, 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 we love to shade, don't look at me like that, don't look at me like that, I'm serious, that was the song written by Mark Kistler's Imagination Station, any of you guys remember Mark Kistler's Imagination Station, we'll go ahead and do this guy too, Mark Kistler's Imagination Station was awesome, I loved watching his stuff when I was a kid, it was fantastic, because he taught you to draw 3D stuff, and, you know, I learned how to draw my first cube, my first cylinder, everything. That's I learned it on Mark Kistler's Imagination Station. I blame Mark Kistler for all of this. I am an artist because Mark Kistler decided to make a kid show and sing a stupid song like, Shade, 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 we love to shade. Such a lame song, but what a neat guy to dedicate his life to helping young kids become artists and uh, it's full proof in the pudding because here I am and I love my job anyway there you go that's my rant for this video I'm sure it's gonna be like six more but why not okay so first shading is in for both faces starting to look a little bit like face number one here so let me go ahead and go in with my secondary deep shadow and this is where we get in with the areas where the Sun just would not hit I might even go a shade darker, but I don't want to go too much darker. Because that's when things start to get hairy. So underneath the nose, especially uh, under the cheek. So, 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 so. Like I said, this is more of a walkthrough so you get to see how I handle it. Because this is stuff that really just can't be explained so well. Because as I look at this, this looks really easy to me, but I know how long it took me to get to this stage. It takes a lot of practice. So you just got to keep practicing, and you'll start seeing all the things that I see. You'll see the places where shadow should be or shouldn't be, or all that good stuff, and you'll start figuring it out for yourself. 
using Photoshop CS5 or the Wacom, C, uh, Wacom Cintiq 12WX, which is the widescreen travel version of the 21UX, which is a humongous, beautiful screen. And um, there we go. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? So now we're going to go over here and start working on this guy. And I uh, love this uh, Cintiq a lot. It has a very small screen, uh, which is um, can be troublesome at times. But let me tell you something. It sure beats drawing on a... Um beats drawing on a tablet. If you guys have worked with a tablet, you know what I mean. You have to train yourself so much to be able to handle the hand-eye coordination of a digital tablet. So this just saves so much trouble. And I love it. It's fantastic. Now this guy does have glasses, but I'm going to put the glasses in later in another, either just when I'm not doing a video or in another video. I probably will do it on my own. Just because the glasses are just a basic round shape, there's nothing really to explain unless you're talking about lenses, but this guy doesn't have thick lenses, so there's really no need to explain how to shade lenses in this case. <clears throat> okay, now that my shadows are all put in here, then I'm going to go ahead and grab my highlights and start going in with those. So I'm going to go find my first highlight. And if you ask me to give you these colors, I will not. These are my trade secret, the colors that I use for all of my work. So if you want to, what you got to do is you got to go on to um, go on to your stuff for yourself and check it out. Okay. I don't like how hard that's put being put in there, and I know why I don't like it. Um, and the reason why, which I should have thought about first, is when I use my brushes, I like to turn on all of my settings, my opacities, my widths, everything up top here, the opacity, the flows, and um, also just the overall sizing. And um, of course, I forgot to do that this time, but uh, that's okay. I, uh, I'm not too mad at the progress I'm making here, so I'm not going to cry about it. <laughs> Okay, so let's just keep doing this. Now what I'm doing is I'm going into the light areas that I did not shade with the dark. And um, what I'm doing is I'm just making them a little bit brighter. So I'm going inside the light area and I'm simply making it lighter. Top of his arm here. And on the other side. You'll see that I'm not doing all the way out to the corners where the other shadow is. Shadow is shadow, shadow, shadow. <laughs> Man, uh, because what I want to do is I want to show a gradient of change, and I can do that by gently airbrushing it on here. You'll see that it looks like it goes from a light to a dark, and then in certain places I'll harden up, like on the nose. And you'll see here in a second when I get in my secondary highlight, and then I'll get in my my main highlight which is a pinpoint highlight and if you've seen my other videos you know my technique this gets really easy though as you keep practicing it really does it's a bit too heavy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my brush a lot bigger so it makes the um, it makes the, the feather bigger which means the area that is just going to slosh paint out there because I don't want a hard line I want soft lines for the shading so all I'm doing is I'm just going over here and I'm hitting these soft areas uh, with that shading here. It's going to help out quite a bit. Looks pretty good. Let's zoom out and take a look at what we've got so far. Oh, it looks fantastic. Okay, now we're going to go back into my color palette of preset colors. If you want to make a preset color, simply select the color here that you want to choose and then hit this little button here and then you can name it whatever color you want. Secondary highlight is what I'm going for next. And it won't show too much of a difference. It'll show a little difference, but not too much. And then I'm just going to go right inside my um, lighter areas, and I'm going to take it just a bit lighter in certain points. So what I'm doing now is I'm just intensifying, making it more vibrant, making it stand out. There was an artist who told me that the places that you really want to stand out, you have to make more vibrant, which means you have to mess with the lighting to get it to that stage. And I love vibrancy in my pieces. Um, so I I really do 
grab a lot of whites and a lot of darks and I like to really enhance it and in shadows instead of doing just blacks or browns get some oranges in there that kind of liven it up a little bit and you know kind of help it along All right, and then I'm just gonna go right here with some of this zoom out and take a look at this stage looks pretty good now this uh, gentleman that I'm drawing over here has this red beard but it's more of a red brown so I'll probably shade that up but we're at 10 minutes here so I need to go ahead and prep to shut down this lesson um, Let's see, what else do I want to do here while I still have the chance? All these touch-ups I can fix later and stuff like that. Um, those are all because of the um, masks that I have. So the masks just need to be edited slightly. And then it uh, looks like these other guys both have brown eyes. So I'll take care of the rest of this. But I wanted to show you guys my technique. And you saw how quickly that went. And I hope that you enjoyed that. In the last couple minutes, let's shade up a shirt, shall we? So let me go grab my area here where I've already created the mask for the t-shirts. I'm going to go ahead and get my color that I've already selected there just by selecting it with the eyedrop tool and then I'm going to get a darker black. It's a, They're supposed to be black shirts but once again I wanted to make sure that um, I wanted to make sure that the outline that I drew will stand off the uh, stand off of that and like I said because I put the mask in here I can shade look right over the face and nothing's happening to the face. No one's freaking out. No one looks like they had a squid squirt them in the face. So uh, that helps out a lot because it speeds up so much. It takes a little bit to create the mask at first, but once that mask is created, you're saved. And it helps so much in the end process as you paint. I can paint three times as fast because I'm not afraid to bleed over onto other areas unless I've created that mask to bleed over onto other areas. Isn't that cool? And like I said, then I'll go in and I'll edit the shirts and stuff so that, that way they, the skin doesn't hide there anymore or show there anymore, you know, whatever, whatever that takes to make it look more feasible. Let's zoom out. It's starting to look a little better. And I'm going to grab the gray that I had originally, go a little bit brighter. And I can select that and very, very lightly if I want, kind of show that maybe these shirts have been in the washer a couple too many times or haven't been in the washer enough, you know, whatever the situation may be. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. There's obviously a lot more to do to this piece, um, but uh, I hope that you enjoyed that little uh, quick walkthrough of how I shade faces. And it is a lot, it's really easy to do once you get the hang of it, but um, you have to go through a practice stage. You have to mature in your art, and that's something that you do just by continually, nonstop drawing and practicing your technique. My technique changes all the time. Let's go ahead and really quickly put in the pinpoint highlight that I told you I was going to do and I didn't do, since we're in 13 minutes here. Basically, all I'm going to do is just apply the smallest amount of pure white in certain areas, and that's my pinpoint highlight. I'll do one on his chin over here. Let's get one on his cheeks on his nose and uh, doesn't have a chin because it's covered up in hair but you'll see the pinpoint highlight it doesn't look like much but it really brings out a lot okay so anyway guys make sure you check out my website timmichaelarts.com for uh, more speed paints for more tutorials for um, especially my web comics the Saints Alive web comic on the main page and the new and improved No Clue the Animatic Series which is a storyboard comic with voiceovers what I finally get to use my voices for stupid stuff so anyway make sure you check that out it is going to be updated on a several week basis because it takes a lot of work but it is a lot of fun okay god bless you guys i will see you on the next tutorial where's the stop button oh i forgot to say i love you i love you all so much you guys are awesome fans and you lift my spirit every single day all right now i'm getting all mushy i'm leaving now bye <laughs>